Le Cordon Bleu İstanbul, Ağustos ayı etkinlikleri kapsamında misafir eğitmen şefimiz Maksut Aşkar'ı Le Cordon Bleu Gastro Auditorium mutfağımızda ağırlamaktan çok mutluyuz. Neolokal yönetici şefi Maksut Aşkar, güncel Anadolu mutfağı konusunu işleyeceği ve etkinliğe özel İmam Bayıldı reçetesinin sunumunu yapacağı çok özel bir gastro show gerçekleştirecek. Reçeteyi chatten sizlerle paylaşıyor olacağız. Sözü önce Zeynep Hanım'a ve sonrasında Le Cordon Bleu Türkiye Direktörü Defne Ertan Tüysüzoğlu'na vermek isterim. We are very happy to host our guest instructor chef Maksut Aşkar in our Le Cordon Bleu Gas Auditorium demo class as a part of Le Cordon Bleu Istanbul August event. Neolokal executive chef Maksut Aşkar will hold a very special gastro show where he will cover the topic of contemporary Anatolian cuisine and present a special recipe for the event, Iman Bayıldı. We will be sharing the recipe with you through the chat. I would like to give the floor to Le Cordon de Turkey director, Defne Ertan Tüysüzoğlu. Çok önemsiyorum. Yani evet, Türkiye'de tabii ki ama... Değerli misafirlerimiz, sevgili öğrenciler, hoş geldiniz. Ee, şöyle aslında çıkarayım izin verirseniz. Ee, çok heyecanlıyız bugün çünkü e, yeni bir seriye başlıyoruz online etkinliklerimizde. Ee, evet, gönül ister ki burada e, takipçilerimizi, öğrencilerimizin hepsini ağırlayabilelim. E, ama hala pandemi şartları biraz devam ettiği için e, online etkinliklerimize devam ediyoruz. Ve burada da artık e, misafir şefleri okulumuzda, tesislerimizde ağırlamaya başlayacağız. Bu anlamda da ilk misafir şefimiz çok sevgili dostum ve sektöre çok önemli e, faydaları olan, e, Türk mutfağının dünyada da tanınmasıyla ilgili çabaları olan e, Maksut Şef'le beraberiz. E, bu gerçekten bizim için de çok onur verici bir e, program. E, bu yüzden de heyecanlıyız. Sesinden de anlayacağınız gibi gayet heyecanlıyız. Biraz sonra sözü e, arkadaşlarıma vereceğim ve e, onlar Maksut Şef'i size tanıtacaklar, tanımayanlar varsa. E, ve uluslararası bir etkinlik yaptığımız için şimdi aynı söylediklerimi İngilizce de söyleyeceğim. Dear guests, dear students, we are starting a new series. We are actually hosting some guest chefs in our premises. And of course, we would love to have you here. We would love to have all our followers, all our uh, students in our premises, in Özgün University, Le Cordon Bleu Istanbul. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we are giving these courses with a very limited uh, students in the classroom uh, with some uh, with guest chefs, upcoming guest chefs. It is actually an honor for me to be here with Maksut Chef, who is a very dear friend, And also he contributed a lot in Turkish cuisine and also to promote Turkish cuisine all over the world. So I would like to give the words to my team first so that they can present Maksud Şef. And we are delighted to have him here. Thank you. Misafir Eğitmen Şefimiz. Misafir eğitmen şefimiz Maksut Aşkar bizlere İmam Bayıldı tarifini sunacak. Etkinliğimiz İngilizce olarak gerçekleşecektir. Zoom ekranınızın alt kısmında yer alan çeviri butonundan Türkçe'yi seçerseniz Türkçe çeviriyi, İngilizce'yi seçerseniz İngilizce dilini dinleyebilirsiniz. Sorularınızı chat üzerinden bizlere iletebilirsiniz. İyi seyirler dileriz. Yes, instructor chef Maksut Aşkar will present the Iman Bayıldı recipe. Our event will be held in English. If you choose Turkish from the interpretation button on your Zoom screen, you can listen in Turkish. If you choose English in your uh, in your button, Zoom screen button, you can listen in English. You can send your questions through the chat. Maksut şefim, etkinlik davetimizi kabul ettiğiniz için çok teşekkür ederiz. Sizi bu etkinlikte görmekten çok mutluyuz. Sözü önce Zeynep Hanım'a, sonrasında misafir eğitmen şefimiz Maksut Aşkar'a vermek isterim. Thank you, Chef, for accepting our event invitation. We are so glad to have you in this event. I would like to give the floor to guest instructor Chef Maksut Aşkar and have a nice event.
So I start, right? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Markus Tashkar. I would like to introduce you to my colleagues first, uh, Gorkam and Orkun. They are responsible uh, uh, from the cold station. So today we are going to uh, prepare you a dish that would easily reflect what I mean up-to-date Anatolian cuisine. Uh, when uh, they asked me to uh, what to put uh, as a name to this presentation, I definitely, without a doubt, told uh, them to put up-to-date Anatolian cuisine because this is what we do at Neolocal. I would like to uh, tell you uh, what Neolocal is actually. Uh, well, uh, I am a chef and the uh, owner of uh, Neolocal restaurant in Istanbul. Uh, you can understand from the name, it is neo-local. So we, what we do is neo-local cuisine, new local cuisine. So that means up-to-date Anatolian cuisine in the kitchen. Uh, today with my colleagues, we are going to cook uh, a very staple dish of summer all around uh, Anatolia, uh, which is called Imam Bayıldı. Uh, it is all about cooking the season's ingredients uh, in summer, which is peppers, eggplants, tomatoes, onions, garlic, olive oil, six ingredients only. So with six ingredients only, you can do this very, very traditional dish where you can find it in Mediterranean, Aegean, Black Sea, uh, or Eastern Anatolia. Uh, it is a super simple dish, which reflects a traditional technique, which is called uh, zeytin yağlı in Turkey. Zeytin yağlı actually means with olive oil. So it tells you a technique that a vegetable, whatever you use, is slowly braised in olive oil with basic ingredients like garlic, onions, tomatoes, and peppers. Or depending on the recipe or the ingredients itself, the ingredients can, may vary, but it is a super simple technique. First, you uh, saute the vegetables inside an olive oil, then you add up other ingredients, depending on what you are cooking, everything comes one after the other. Uh, so it may vary. Uh, then you slowly uh, simmer it, adding uh, extra virgin olive oil on top also. So it may require lots of olive oil, which is fine with us in Turkey, as we are a country of olive olives. Uh, to start with, my, uh, how we are going to proceed is, uh, my colleagues will be cooking uh, the dish in a traditional way. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to explain you, talk to you about our traditions, where uh, this uh, eggplant dish, uh, why egg, eggplant dish is important for us, and many more about uh, the depths of Anatolian cuisine. Uh, so you may start guys. Simply, Neolocal cuisine is all about mostly about my childhood memories, but it's all about the stories, traditions, habits, and living culture, or almost lost culture. Uh, when we are talking of traditions, uh, the most important thing is to be able to express what we understand from traditions. Traditions for us is where we remember from the past or our elders passing them to us from the generations. Uh, and the cultures is, it's kind of a habit uh, about the region, very, very region that you are living in uh, with the uh, characteristics of the geography itself. Uh, that means actually wherever you are from, your uh, characteristics of culinary traditions may vary. Uh, but if you are in a same land zone, uh, even if it varies, the ideas are super similar and it can uh, switch, switch and shift through the borders. Uh, I would like to tell you about uh, why 
Anatolian cuisine is very rich, yet uh, almost a hidden gem. Uh, first of all, if we look at the French cuisine, which you are studying, uh, everything is written by the book. So everything is there. So you know what you need to do. So there is a guide to you. In Anatolian cuisine, the guides are only the moms. So there was no written information about it. So the information passed from mothers to daughters, from daughters to their daughters, and it came up to today. But given the changes uh, in the system of uh, humanity, let's say, Unfortunately, we are slowly losing our traditions to be forgotten. So what I am talking about is finding the eggplant of 50 years ago, or as I remember, I'm 44, 30, 80 years ago, tasting the eggplant in the summer was super delicious. I was missing the eggplant in winter, but now, I miss missing the eggplant in winter because you can find it 12 months a year. But do you think it is the same taste with the right season or the wrong season? No, it doesn't. So that means actually we are disrupting our traditions uh, by using the very ingredients for a traditional recipe in the wrong season. That is why this dish is very important for us because it reflects August, sorry, mid July and uh, end of August. So when it comes to September, we have some other recipes for eggplants, which might be a dessert, but it's only in the September. But now we are just going to cook a nice uh, staple dish of traditional Anatolian cuisine, Imam Bayilde. So let's go to, what, the, what my colleagues are doing. Uh, the process is simple. In order for us to get the best taste of eggplant, we first fry it. Uh, normally, when you do this dish, you always do pyjama style uh, carving, but instead we are frying them whole because we will need the skin of the eggplant. We don't want to throw away the skin of the eggplant, but use it back in the plate. Uh, then my colleague, Gertjan, is sauteing the uh, onions, garlics, uh, pepper, and potatoes. Actually, in the traditional recipe, there is no potato, but when we uh, wanted to uh, get the best result out of our idea of the recipe. We wanted to add some potatoes in it, which is fine. It doesn't change the taste at all because we will need a consistency where I'm going to express later on. Uh, <laughs> but let's think uh, of this. So while I could only be cooking super traditional, easy way with, and simple, and whatever I cook, put it on your plate just like my mom did. Uh, I could do that, but there are lots of precious chefs around uh, Anatolia, which they are already doing it. But I am really sorry how uh, my cuisine is not known very well enough abroad, which keeps it hidden gem, because we cannot give you recipes, we can only give you our mothers. Uh, the idea is actually why I decided to be on this path cooking Anatolian cuisine, because this is my roots, this is where I feed myself from. Uh, I seek for my um, childhood memories. I seek for the tastes of my childhood memories. In order for me to find it out, I need to find the right produce, produced with the right techniques, 50 years ago or 100 years ago, or it has always been there for centuries as a tradition. So in order for me to save my uh, traditions, I will need to update my traditions 
according to the to, to today's needs. So I will simply need to take my traditions without losing its essence, but enhancing it with the new ways of uh, technology, new ways of thinking and uh, techniques, and change, the, change it into a way that would be welcomed with the young generation of chefs today, and with their help, carry it to the future so that it can be sustainable. In order for you to have a sustainable future in culinary scene, you need to sustain your traditions. So in Neolocal, we are just trying to find right ways to get the best results of sustaining the traditions for the future by en enhancing it with the way we are doing it uh, today. So what we are going to do simply is after we fry the eggplants, after we fry the eggplants, uh, tomatoes, peppers, garlic, onion uh, are braised in olive oil. Now we are just going to rest the eggplants over them and add some olive oil with its own juice. It will be slowly cooked. It can take from 20 minutes to 40 minutes, depending on your fire, depending on your stove, depending on your pan. We always do it in uh, copper pans uh, at home because, uh, at the restaurant, because it used to be cooked in copper pans in the old times. So without losing its essence, when I say without losing its essence, we need to also respect the ways that our mothers used to do. But of course, with the enhancements of today. Uh, I would like to let you know that please feel free to ask as many questions as you can, uh, because I will try to answer as much as uh, as much questions as I can after the demo. Uh, while they are cooking, I'm just going to tell you about what we can up, add up to a typical recipe, a traditional recipe, how we can change it into an updated version of today. So, you know, computers doesn't stay the same, technology doesn't stay the same. It needs to meet the needs of uh, people. And also gastronomy needs to meet the needs of people, needs of palates, the tastes. Uh, that is why we need to think further what we can add up to it. So I told you about this super typical traditional recipe. All you do is just putting it in a pan and slowly cooking it and it's done. Put it on a plate, voila. So what happens with the skins? I have no skins left. Uh, what happens with the leftover juice? So what would you do? Did you uh, take a bread and dip your bread into Imam Bayilde at home? You did, right? I guess we all, all of us did in Anatolia. So how can I let my guests dip uh, the bread into Imam Bayilde? It is all about the remembrance. It is all about the childhood memories, the stories. And how can I take my guests uh, into my world while eating my food? So that is the question that we are always asking ourselves and trying to find better ways, better uh, expressions uh, about it. So I just would like to show you something. <laughs> so when you cook it, when you cook the Imam Bayilde, you end up with having this juice in the bottom with lots of olive oil, uh, with an explosion of the taste of the dish. So I call it Imam Bayildu water. 
So what I do is in order for me to soak the bread into the dish, I need to have a bread, but I cannot let my guests soak the bread into the dish. Then I need to make a bread. So what do you need for bread? You need flour, you need oil, you need water, depending on the recipe. Well, if you are doing a brioche type bread, you need fat. So it can be oil also, olive oil also. How about making a, a brioche like bread using this water and fat? Then you end up with a bread we call Imam Bayildi Ekmeyi. So it is a, a bread that gives you the flavor of Imam Bayildi. When you smell, you smell the flavor of the dish. So how we end up with is uh, this beautiful bread. So how about us frying the eggplants? We still use the same fat to fry the eggplants so that it also gives this beautiful flavor into it. Uh, how about blanching onions on top? Blanching the onions in the juice of the dish. So everything we use actually are an agent to enhance the flavors, to respect what we are using for the dish, respecting the eggplants, respecting the tomato, respecting the pepper, because it's their season, it's their show. We simply take this show into a plate and share it with the guests to give them this beautiful memory uh, of ours from the childhood. Hmm? Ah. So when we cut the eggplants into cubes, mm -hmm. So when we cut the eggplants in the cubes, we just let, leave them in salt water, uh, then dry them, and it is ready to fry. So of course, uh, I'm sorry, I'm an obsessive chef. Everything needs to be neat and cut cleanly. You can see it from the plates we design at the restaurant, but it doesn't mean that we throw away the leftovers. So what we do is we blanch those eggplants and dehydrate them and make it into a dust that would also help you uh, taste the beautiful uh, eggplant of the season. Uh, and of course, how about the skins? Uh, yeah. So I'm not going to wait for the dish to be cooked, but I want to tell you first, then I will show you when it's cooked. Simply, when we uh, cook the dish, we have this eggplants with the skin on top. So when it's cooler enough, we just uh, skim the inside of the eggplants and we're left over with the skins, which got the flavor of the tastes, the onion, the pepper, the tomato, and the garlic and olive oil. Then what we do is we dehydrate them. And after dehydrating this eggplants with the help of a scissors, we thinly cut them. Once we thinly cut them, all we are left is with the skins of eggplants, which we call it eggplant nori, to make our guests familiar with what they have seen before, but what they are seeing now.
Now, uh, after we take the bread, bake the bread, we thinly slice them into rectangles and we just cut them like, I don't know, you cut faga to give them this beautiful shape so that innards are also cooking. So we fry them. Actually, we sear them in butter, olive oil. Thank you. It is, this process is uh, done daily. So this bread is baked daily. Uh, the most important key to zeytin yağlı dish is once you cook it, you never put it in the fridge. It needs to be eaten at the day and it has to be room temperature, warm. It shouldn't be hot. It should be something you cook in the afternoon for dinner or noon for the afternoon. But of course, that doesn't mean, uh, it doesn't stop me from eating uh, it very next morning for breakfast. Uh, so this is why the best taste you want to get is always uh, cooking the day, eating at night, never put it in the fridge. So Imam Bayildi is also such a dish. Once we fry the breads, we will be ready to do our plating. We start with the bread, right? Well, you can always keep the traditions as they are, yes. Like our mothers used to do it. Uh, but somehow you feel the urge to change it into today's life. I could easily learn cooking French or Italian and cook a beautiful penne arabiata pasta or any other. But that even if I was the greatest chef, it would still be a copy of another cuisine culture, in my opinion. So choosing the path that I'm cooking Anatolian cooking only. I am only copying my mother, which she already lets me do it. Or all the mothers in Anatolia, which they already let us do it. As long as you can reach the recipe, because they never give, they always hide the recipes or they give you mistaken recipes. My mother still does it for others, but you need to get to understand and you need to be eager to search for a recipe, search for a, a culture, a tradition, an idea, a remembrance, a childhood memory. Our, our way of finding the solution to cook Anatolian cuisine is very difficult than other cuisines because they are already by the book. But ours is requiring emotions, uh, feelings, it doesn't have a rule. It only has some techniques that can be applied easily. But other than that, it is all about what you remember from the past and what you want to take with you to future today. So this is all about Anatolian cooking. Done? What is this? So, 
this is how we do it with uh, eggplant bread, imam bayildi bread. Then we fry seven cubes of eggplants for a dish. It needs to be shallow frying. Uh, well, in Anatolian cooking, the names uh, of the dishes get uh, the dishes get their names from either sometimes techniques or from the shapes. So when it comes to this dish, Imam Bayilda means uh, the priest painted. It's it's a senseless name, but it always has a story behind it. So most of the dishes also get their names from the stories and uh, it always is a sensible meaning because it reminds you something so it always uh, connects you uh, with a story to the dish so this is what anatolian cuisine is mostly about Before I start plating, by the way, uh, maybe there might be some questions asked already uh, so that while waiting for the eggplants, I can just... Are there? No? Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I ask you a question then. What do you expect from your future? But I'll answer it to yourselves, guys. Uh, yeah, what do you expect from your future? Why did you decide to become a chef? What are you willing to express in the future? And what defines who you are? These are the questions. Some important questions that would uh, show the path to you in the future. Actually, these were the questions uh, I asked for myself many, many years ago. And I decided to first understand myself, explore myself, and find ways to define myself to myself first. Then no need to express yourself to the others. You are visible with the works you have done and you will be explored with the works you have done and the tastes of course yeah it became like a philosophical uh, master class <laughs> but it is good actually i'm here to uh, give you a different direction that you can follow or it might give you different ideas and perspectives well, we normally do it with the fat of the dish. We fry them, but we didn't want to wait for the uh, dish to finish. So what we do is we randomly put seven eggplants on the bread. So I told you, as you finish cooking, you may go eating, just uh, putting on a plate. But what we do is after we finish, we take the skins off, we dehydrate them, as I told you, and whatever we are left off is the innards of eggplants, tomatoes, potatoes, onions, garlic, olive oil, salt, and pepper if you like then what we do is all the leftover ingredients are put in a blender 
and made it into a very fine puree of imam bayıldı. So actually, because of the air in the vegetables and water in the vegetables, the plate, the dish, the amount of the dish, let's say 100 grams. But when you pray it, because it becomes super rich, you don't need that much of uh, amount to swallow. So what we do is to enhance the flavor of the dish, we simply pray it and just put droplets on the bread. Yes, uh, we need some freshness in the dish. So we do have the fresh pepper, fresh tomatoes, the parsley. Actually, I like my Imam Bayıldır with parsley. Uh, and as I mentioned to you before, blanched onion, onions, which are blanched in the juice of Imam Bayıldır. So these are five of them. Five each. So let's remember how we got here. As a super simple dish, Imam Bayalde, you cook the dish with six ingredients only. Eggplant, garlic, onion, tomatoes, peppers, and olive oil. Of course, you add some salt, you season it. But sometimes, as I mentioned you, I like cooking it with parsley, but not necessarily. Then with lots of olive oil, you just braise the dish. And you always eat it warm, not hot but never cold, not put in the fridge. It has to be cooked in the day, finished in the day. That is the tradition of Zeytinyağlı. And it also applies for eggplant too, uh, the Imam Bayıldır too. So in order for us to enhance the flavor of the dish, we take the juice and the oil, uh, fat of the dish and make this bread, as I told you, Imam Bayıldır bread. Then, fry the bread on the fat of the dish, then fry eggplants on the fat of the dish again, Imam Bayıldı, then puree the leftovers and put it in the, on the bread and add the peppers, tomatoes and onions. And then, as I mentioned to you before, when you do cook imam bayıldır, you always do pyjama shaped skin of eggplants and you fry them. But instead of doing it, we do fry them whole so that we can use the eggplant skins uh, to make a nori out of it. Tabii ki. Tamam, İngilizce cevap vereceğim yine. Uh, well, as I mentioned you today while I was cooking, I am just trying to enhance 
my childhood memories without losing its essence and the flavors, whatever, whatever I remember from my past, but still having the same recipes as traditions, but using the best ingredients in its season and asking myself, how can I enrich in the flavor of the traditions that I remember from my childhood? So just taking a traditional recipe, thinking of the ingredients and thinking of how can I further apply a technique or further create a technique to express the dish in a more concentrated way. So it's a process. We do it for all the recipes we have in the restaurant. And when we think of, well, it's been seven years and we have this amazing team working together. We always sit down when we plan a new dish, sit down all together and create ideas, talk of ideas. What can be done? How can it be done? By thinking of how many weeks we can find that ingredients. Even if it's two weeks, it's fine. We put it on the menu for two weeks, doesn't matter. But I don't want to lose uh, the chance to share uh, it with public. Anyways, uh, I hope that question was, I mean, the answer was uh, satisfactory. As I told you before, after we cook the dish, it is cooked, right? Did, did you show how you took the skin in here? Yes. So after we cook the dish, we just uh, skin off, as you can see it in here. And uh, once we dehydrate it, we simply uh, reach the skins. And then when we, once we cut it in thin slices, we have this beautiful eggplant nori, which we add on top of the dish. And then the leftover eggplants, the chunk, chunky pieces I showed you, we just blanch the eggplants, uh, then dehydrate them and make it into an eggplant powder. Yes. So, what I call this dish and the similar dishes in the restaurant is one bite fits all. So simply with the one bite, you can get the idea of this tradition. If you are a local, you, it can take you to your childhood memories because the tastes are there. We ask ourselves this very first question. When we design this dish, who are we going to touch to? Who are we going to share it? And what are we willing to share with them? So this is the idea about it. First of all, when you look at it, it's not Imam Bayilde at all. You cannot judge this dish without tasting it. So once you taste the dish, then you get to understand what we are trying to achieve sharing it with you. So this is all about what we do at Neo Local. Super simple yet stylish. We don't call it fine dining, we call it refined dining because we actually try to refine our traditions to be accepted today by you guys and carry it to the future by you guys. We only can uh, be a good example for you. And that's what we are trying to do and be a good example to our team in the kitchen so that they can carry it further. Yeah, I guess that was enough about the recipe. Uh, I would like to thank my colleagues helping me out uh, uh, so that I could be relaxed talking to you as much as possible. And if you have questions, Marhaba Hojan. <laughs> If you have questions, if you have noted more questions, I will be happy to answer. No? Oh, I was super clear today. Perfect. Well, it might not come to your mind, but 
if any question tackles your minds, uh, don't hesitate to send your questions to the school administration. They will definitely find me and uh, push me to answer. Don't worry about it. Uh, I will be always around. Thank you so much for listening. I hope uh, this uh, presentation uh, added a lot to your vision. Thank you. Well, well I finished. Huh? <laughs> <gülüyor> Teşekkürler Maksut Şef. Sizi izlemek bir zevk de çok lezzetli görünüyor. E, thank you Maksut Şef. It was a pleasure watching you. It seems so delicious. E, katılımınız için teşekkür ederiz. Etkinliği tekrar izlemek isterseniz YouTube kanalımızdan ulaşabilirsiniz. Thank you for participation. If you would like to watch this event again, please visit our YouTube channel. Have a nice day. <gülüyor>